Welcome back, video creeps. You know, I don't know where your cred lays with the gremlins. Like, I don't know if you know a lot. I don't know if you know a little, but like, I want you to know more just in case. I don't ever want to see you in a situation where someone backs you in the corner and they're like, who did Howie Mandel voice in gremlins? <laughs> no, 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 can't have that. So I'm gonna educate you guys just a little bit. I took to the internet to find 20 really interesting, and I like to think somewhat obscure, facts about gremlins, both part one and new batch. You know, so that way this weird individual who has a proclivity towards like being really aggressive towards people who don't know enough about gremlins can back off. Also, just cause like I did a review for Gremlins like when I first started my channel and I rewatched it. I didn't teach you guys anything. Kinda feel like I owe you. So let's get into 20 facts about Gremlins. Gremlins were almost played by real life monkeys. So as we all know, Gremlins is animatronic. We got all the puppet action going down, but originally they did a whole like test screening to see if monkeys would be able to play the Gremlins. However, after putting like Gremlin masks on these monkeys, they just like froked out. They did not like it at all. They were not fans, which I think worked in the movie's favor because a lot of us enjoyed the charm and the puppetry of Gremlins. So way to go monkeys for like, I don't know, like not, like not doing a good job. Now Gremlins was extremely successful. So much so that the studio immediately wanted to make a new film. But Joe Dante was not into it. He was like, I got artistic integrity. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do the same thing again. So the studio was like, all right, bet, I guess. I mean, we have the rights, so. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. Some of the ideas for a Gremlin sequel would have been the Gremlins go to Vegas and like just French stuff up. They were even kicking around like this idea that maybe like what would happen if like maybe Gremlins were like, like, I don't know, like in space, the final frontier. But luckily Joe Dante ended up coming back and making the sequel to Gremlins and we got new batch. Speaking of new batch, Fact number three comes right out of that camp. Now at this point, we all know Brainy Gremlin, the very smart Gremlin who could actually talk. But what you might not know is that Tim Curry actually auditioned for the role, but was ultimately beaten out by Tony Randall. Now, if you notice in the sequel, Billy's dad from part one is not in the film. However, he was supposed to be. They originally had written a scene for Billy's father to come back where he got to show off his inventing prowess. The film would have included a scene with Gizmo wearing a little wetsuit so that way he can go swimming without any worry of making new gremlins. However, with New Batch, there was so much going on that when it came time to cut the film down, it just didn't have a place for it. Speaking of Gizmo, did you know that the look of Gizmo was actually inspired by the Japanese chin? I feel like once you see that, you, you see it. And also while we're on the subject of dogs, Mushroom, like the dog actor who played Billy's dog in the film, was also in the movie Pumpkinhead. Same dog, very successful. We, you know, we have our horror actors, we, we have our horror dogs too. Now, if you ever thought Furbies looked a little familiar, you are not the only one. And uh, yeah, Warner Brothers saw that and they got right to the suing. Tiger Electronics, who actually made the Furby, got the full blunt of that lawsuit. And oh my God, they, they like embarrassed Tiger with it. They made them publicly acknowledge that like, yeah, they, they look like Mogwais. Gave them a seven figure settlement and then had to redesign the Furby. Wild stuff. But then it does make me wonder how eventually we got to a place where we actually have like a gizmo Furby, cause that's out there. Gremlins was released the exact same day that Ghostbusters was in 1984. Now, obviously with Gremlins, there's a shitload of new designs, which also means that there's a ton of designs that did not make it into the film but there's pictures. 
Originally, there was a scene where a bunch of gremlins broke into the Splice of Life laboratory. And two of these gremlins actually got designed. One was gonna be a rhinoceros gremlin, and then the other was an elephant gremlin. Now, it seems as if they just didn't have the puppeteers in order to bring these characters to life, and so they fell to the wayside. So all we have are these two images of rhinoceros gremlin and elephant gremlin, which is a fight I want to see. Now, if you're sitting around like me, just waiting for either Secrets of the Mogwai to drop or Gremlins 3, hello? There is actually a fun parody with a lot of the original characters and then some called the Groblins. It's right here on YouTube and Zach Gilligan comes back. So does Corey Feldman. And then they actually throw a little Barbara Crampton in there just for funsies. It's about five years old, but if you missed it, it's pretty funny. They parody Gremlins really well and it's worth checking out if you're a fan. Now, aside from Mohawk, who we see in a new batch, he hangs out with like three other Gremlins and they're never named, but they have names. The crew is Lenny and George from Of Mice and Men. And the last one's just Daffy, like the duck. The original script for Gremlins was like way darker. Like they wrote a scene where like Gremlins would be in a McDonald's and instead of eating burgers, they're eating people. Billy's mom would have gotten her head completely decapitated and they would like throw her head down the stairs like a bowling ball. There was even a scene written into this thing where like the Gremlins straight up just ate Billy's dog. But Steven Spielberg wanted to capitalize on how cute Gizmo was and kind of wanted to rein it in. He also was doing pretty well with like family-centered movies and shit. So though, yes, like Gremlins has a PG-13 like rating, if they had written that original script, they would have gotten that R. Someone else who was really hot around this time was Tim Burton, who was also considered to come in and direct the movie Gremlins. The only reason that it did not happen is because Steven Spielberg didn't trust that Tim Burton had what it took at that time to do a full length feature film. Later on though, it did work out for Tim Burton as he would put out his first feature film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Now, kind of in the same vein as Groblins, there's actually a feature-length film that parodies Gremlins. The critically panned film Munchies by Roger Corman is essentially Gremlins. And they've gone on record saying like, yeah, no, we just wanted to do what they did, but sillier. Which is an odd ambition because Gremlins is already kind of silly. Whenever they spilled water on Gizmo and then the little balls of Mogwai pop out, those are just balloons. So, you know, innovation when it comes to these movies. Something really cool that I learned while researching this whole thing was that Gizmo was originally supposed to turn into Stripe. However, Steven Spielberg had the foresight to see that people were gonna fall in love with Gizmo and wanna see as much of him as possible. So Billy and Gizmo turned more into like an Ash and Pikachu situation. It's been said that Gizmo will never turn into a gremlin just because we wouldn't like it. But the idea that Gizmo, this sweet little creature, would have turned into Stripe, I do love that idea. I, I think it's cool in theory, though I do love me some Gizmo. In Cantonese Chinese, the word Mogwai means demon. We love Zack as Billy, but he almost didn't get the role. In fact, other people that were considered for the role of Billy was a young Judd Nelson and the duck man himself, Emilio Stephans. In a new batch, the opening aerial scene where you look at New York City, that's just unused stock footage from Superman, specifically the quest for peace. And at number 20, everyone knows that the voice of Gizmo was Howie Mandel, but a lot of people don't know that the voice of Stripe was actually Frank Welkner, who's well known for doing the voice of Freddy from Scooby-Doo, Megatron on Transformers, and Kermit the Frog from Muppet Babies. So guys, I hope that you committed that to memory because this guy, he's coming, all right? I don't know who he is, I don't know what he looks like, but if he comes through, I wanna make sure that you guys are prepared. So like, watch this video a bunch of times, you know? I want this stuff to commit to memory. If for some weird reason you have not liked the video, cause I mean, I'm helping you out here. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you're new. And if you're old, make sure your notification bell is put all the way on. 
If you dig what I do and you want to help support me and help me continue to make these videos, a link to my Patreon is down below. Click it. Check it out. I've been I've been promoting this thing for like every video, so you should just do it. All right, I hope you learned something. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace, video creeps. Some roses are red and some are blue. So please take a bunch here just for you. Besides, they were on sale three for two. You're the kind of deserves a bouquet. You deserve a bouquet. You deserve a bouquet. Cause you're my Patreon, take my Patreon. Look at the reviews, Kyoto. Larry Sherman, Cody Stewart, Car Wounded, and Butcher's Ryan House. For the X Store, Michael Andrews, Rivier. Survivors killed by Voorhees. Yo, Adrienne, Neymar, Neely, the Lady Horror, Jazzy, the Rabbit, Nima. Rachel Marie Prince Giselle Bittersweet thinking at L How can I tell you thank you all for being my Patreon, yeah And now I'm driving in a car and I'm going pretty I'm falling on the road and I know that I'm eating And I will use a big L It's only my Patreon, yeah, yeah, yeah